I come from a small mining town in Arizona where there's not a lot to do except hike. It was a good but boring area to grow up. Our population was small with little to no crime. My father owned the quarry where a majority of the community's economic strength came from. He left me a sizable inheritance after he passed away. I bought a truck and a house out in the plains with a basketball court and a pool. That was the sole extent of my lavish spending, but it was all I needed. Unless you count pizza, I didn't have many vices to blow my fortune on. I'd never been an avid party goer, luckily. Like a lot of people my age, one indulgence I did have was watching YouTube. Urban exploration became a most searched category of mine from 2009 on. I became a subscriber of a content creator and urbex vlogger named Isolation Infinity. He kept himself anonymous and didn't show his face. He used footage of the haunts he went into as captured by the body camera strapped to his chest. His voice's baritone became a signature element of the channel. He traveled all over the world and went into many chilling places. These included vacant hospitals, asylums, morgues, and train stations. He even stumbled upon a murder in progress once. A homeless man had stomped another transient to death in a farmhouse. He uploaded edited parts of it. This was a controversial decision. It almost resulted in a lifetime ban for him from the platform. The clips did help law enforcement later on, nonetheless. He was also arrested a few times for trespassing on famous estates. The Houdini Mansion in Los Angeles was one of them, but none of his fans held this against him. We respected him for being willing to get into trouble with the law in the pursuit of the next viral video. Late last year, Isolation Infinity announced he was going to have a live face reveal. It was only going to be for his patrons, i.e. those who gave money to his Patreon account. I contributed funds to it on a monthly basis. I viewed him as a pioneer of his entertainment niche and didn't mind sparing a little change. He emailed me and told me I was one of a dozen allowed to attend the live event. He further stated it would be in a password-protected chat room. He also promised an exclusive video which would not make it onto the public video lineup. I was more interested in the latter than the former. I never cared what his appearance was since I already had a vision of someone my age in their mid to late twenties. It was hard to convince me he looked any different from the picture in my mind's eye. Still, I wasn't going to turn down the chance to find out. Being able to brag to his diehard followers who didn't get to experience it would be worth it alone. The night of the scheduled face reveal, I booted up my PC. I kicked back on a lounge chair in the second story room of my house, which was my entertainment space. It was complete with video game consoles and my beloved Alienware computer. An open bag of pepper jerky and a bottle of ginger ale sat next to my keyboard. I went into my email. The password was in my inbox. I followed the link. It led me to a video of a room with nothing in it but a red wall with a baby blue frame. The caption, Isolation Infinity will be on shortly, rested at the bottom of the screen. I expected a home studio, and instead got what appeared to be someone's dingy basement in need of a new coat of paint. What bothered me the most was the sound of heavy machinery whirring in the background. I wrote it off as bad plumbing. A man came into the frame. He was slim and wore a trench coat with maroon buttons on its front. He reached down, grabbed the lens of the camera, and shifted it upward. The familiar voice we had all grown fond of started to count down. Are you ready to see who I am? Isolation Infinity asked. One, two, three, four. At five, he hoisted it upwards and pointed it at his face. I froze. He looked nothing like what I had visualized. He was hairless, emaciated, pale, and had marble black eyes. He reminded me of Werner Krauss from the old German 1920 film The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. His mouth hung open and tilted to the side, as if he couldn't control the movement of his jaw. The most alarming thing to me wasn't how his features weren't flattering. That explained why he valued being off-camera for most of his career. What upset me the most in the beginning was how the disparity in his perceived age made me feel lied to. He always told his fans he was a young man, like most of his demographic. The individual before me on the screen was in his 50s at the earliest. I've been fantasizing about broadcasting this for a long time, he said as he licked his lips. You have made this possible, and so I need to show my appreciation by giving thanks in the most sincere way I know how. He moved the camera to the left, and I couldn't believe what I saw. A woman in her thirties sat on a grimy floor, her head down from evident exhaustion. Rusted chains circled her arms. She wore a tattered black top, as though someone's knife or nails had left wounds on portions of her torso. Stains were on her clothes. 
She had spent time in the dirt fighting someone or clawing her way out of a soiled embankment before this. Say something. He ordered her. Tell them you can't wait to die. The blades of a chainsaw came into view and its motor revved. She whimpered with pain, and when she tried to murmur something I saw blood drip from her mouth. I dragged the mouse cursor over to the right hand side of the screen to see how many people were in the chat. The answer I received left me weak. No one else was there but me. The others had either left or were never there to begin with, and I was too stupid to notice until then. My heartbeat increased as I tried to close the window out. I couldn't. The X symbol on the right hand side was visible, but useless. It was like every virus infected pop up ad that you couldn't escape from. What? Isolation Infinity asked. You don't like it, Mark? Everything I do is to make my most devoted subscribers happy. A chill ran through me. He knew my name. It took me a second to realize he had gotten it through my membership to his Patreon. The fact that he was aware of how I was his only viewer worried me. Was I going to be the sole witness to a barbaric act of murder? Calm down, I reassured myself. This is an elaborate prank he's recording right now. He's wearing scary Hollywood makeup and she's an actress. This is all for the sake of getting more views. The chainsaw has to be a prop bought off Etsy.com. Still, my hand inched towards the phone to call 911. The way the woman expressed her misery in the moment was all too convincing. I held my device closer to my ear. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Mark. He stared right at the screen for a moment, his eyes making perfect contact with mine. Can he see me? He lifted the chainsaw above the woman's head. He brought it down with a noise from his throat that sounded like a cross between a scream and a laugh. A fountain of gore spurted out. The lens got hit with crimson bubbles. He cackled as I unplugged my computer. I carried it downstairs to my car and drove to the nearest police station. I filled out an incident report in an office with a dying lamp and the scowl of a detective facing me. He looked as though he would have rather been anywhere else but at work. For the first two hours there, I had to convince them that I wasn't a crazy person. They thought I was there to waste their time with a fanciful tale of my correspondence with some creep. I hope it was all a hoax, I said. If this isn't real, no one would be happier about it than me. Here's my computer. See if you can't trace where he's at in case it… <coughs> I gagged before I could complete my thought. The idea of it being authentic was overwhelming. They had cyber crimes go over everything, and a few days later I got my PC back. It took about a week before I received a call from someone working the case. She was a homicide investigator named Samantha Brown. We found the killer was streaming from a bunker in Virginia, she said. It's an old fallout shelter abandoned since the Cold War. He calls himself the I-73 Butcher since that highway is his preferred route. He uses it as a screen name on the dark web. Isolation Infinity is a serial killer? I asked, feeling a knot in my stomach. No, she said. The real Isolation Infinity is someone else. This maniac poses as famous people. He uses a combination of tools, including voice altering software and encrypted Wi Fi. He hacks into their accounts. He gets a thrill out of making complete strangers watch his acts of terror. His tech-savvy ways also allow him to control other people's webcams, and we don't know how many he's breached. He's on several most wanted lists of different agencies. We've never found out what he looks like. The faces he uses on those terrible live streams are all prosthetic. He's managed to stay anonymous and avoided the news cycle. I'm sorry you saw such torment. The good part is you turning in your computer helped us at least find out his last known whereabouts. The scene's searched and we have some evidence. He's... Uh, he's still out there? somewhere? For now. I went to bed that night with a host of emotions. I felt violated by a complete monster that sabotaged my privacy. Moreover, I felt dumb for getting swindled. I still feel shivers over the fact that he's not apprehended. Word of what happened got to the real Isolation Infinity, who has, as of late, deleted his entire channel. Many speculated on how victims mistaking him for an insane person perturbed him. Sometimes, as I lay my head down and drift off to sleep, I hear a noise by my window. I jump up and think it's a chainsaw. Thus far, it's been a neighbor's lawnmower every time. I hope it stays that way. 
Thank you all so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, The Bone Man, Rubbishbin69, Tannis, Ruler of All, and Doomsday LLC, Prince and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description. 